I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to tonight's meeting. Um, we're going to start off with our favorite thing, Student of the Month, and I think we're going to do February 1st. Is that right? We'll start off with Hornet Park and Mrs. Probe. Well, good evening, everyone. I'm Erin Provost, the principal at Hornet Park Elementary School, and it's a pleasure to be here with you this evening. And a happy belated Easter, and welcome back from spring break. Um, just a couple of things. I'll keep the school update kind of brief this evening so we can celebrate our students. Um, but as you know, the saying is that April showers bring May flowers. And so at Hornet Park, we're really taking this long month um, of April and the long month of May um, to really shower our students with the tools they need to be successful to wrap up this, this school year. Um, not only do we hope to shower them with authentic and engaging learning experiences, but also with love, support, and then a smidgen of fun as well. So um, some things that we have been doing uh, to shower our, our students with these things um, also have involved our families. And so one thing I wanted to update you this evening on is how we're doing with Accelerated Reader and Reading Railroad. Um, those are two programs that we use to encourage independent reading among students or reading with their families at home. And so students can earn a certain level and they receive a certificate. But I want to re refer with you this evening about a higher level of achievement. Students can also earn a lunch with me or a lunch with their teacher or extra recess with me. And so those are kind of like the higher achieving um, AR Reading Railroad students. And I wanted to let you know I have been able to recognize 199 students at Hornet Park who are beginning readers um, as of the four spring break. And so I think that's a huge accomplishment when we're coming in beginning readers and we're here at the end of the year, we've been able to recognize at those higher levels nearly 200 kiddos. So a pat on the back to not only our students and their hard work and their teachers, but our families that are spending time each evening reading together. And then also to Betty Collins, who volunteers nearly daily each week. And the students can go and spend time with her testing and reading as well. So that's one example of how we're working together with families to shower those blessings on our students. And then also some fun things we have going on this month. Um, April 19th is going to be a PJ day. April 26th will be hat day. And those both, the proceeds go to Riley Children's Hospital. And then uh, Mr. Buckler and I talked, and he gets to talk about the spring carnival. So be on the edge seat about what else is um, April 26th. So we want to encourage not only each classroom and each student, but each family to really have a final push these last few weeks of school. Um, we don't have a break for a while, so let's really plug along to, our, to try and focus to meet our school goal, which is all about phonemic awareness and reading by the end of the school year. Okay, you know, I could talk forever, so I won't. But I will go ahead and begin recognizing our first student of the month. As you know, we'll be doing two this evening. And so I'd like to begin with our February student of the month, Bryn Barnett. Bryn, would you please come up? <laughs> Some wonderful things her teachers have had to say about Bryn. Uh, Mrs. Boss, her teacher, is here this evening, so thank you, Mrs. Boss. Says, I have felt so fortunate to have had Bryn in my class for the past two years. Bryn is a sweet, wonderful young lady. She's kind, helpful, and is an amazing role model. She has a way of assisting and guiding other students without coming across as bossy or pushy. She always has a positive attitude, striving to do her best in everything. Bryn is always up to a challenge. She especially loves to write and illustrate books. And I read one about cats just recently. Um, she recently wrote a well-organized chapter book to share with the class. I, it's also been a pleasure to work with Bryn's family, who is like an entire row here this evening. Um, it is obvious that Bryn has had a loving support from many family members. Also from Mrs. Etter, she says Bryn always does the right thing without being asked. She sets a good example when others sometimes struggle to do the right thing. She's wonderful to have around, making her successful in completing her tasks. And finally, Mrs. McDivitt, there's more on here, but I have to cut it short. Bryn is so sweet. She's very responsible, respectful, and kind to her peers. She is such an excellent role model. I have enjoyed having her several times for success and in and out of the classroom this year. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to present Bryn Barnett. All right, it's my pleasure to go ahead and introduce our next student of the month. Our March student of the month is Avery Carlisle. Avery, would you please come up and join me? Ms. Coons has to say 
say this about sweet Abraham. He is so sweet. Whenever I see him, he's always doing the right thing, following directions, and trying his best to be a very good example. I have also never even heard one tattle about him from another student, which at Horner Park is amazing. <laughs> he always treats everyone very sweetly, and he's a good one to be our student of the month for Hornet Park. Mrs. Sutton says, I absolutely love, all caps, Abram and feel so blessed to be a part of his school journey. He's polite, gentle, and always tries any challenge. He's kind, happy, and just all around a pleasure to work with. Work with, excuse me. Mrs. Bennett says, Abram joined our class in the middle of this year, and he's been so very cooperative and kind to all the other students. He's a hard worker. He tries his best all the time. He is prepared each day, and he's ready to start his work. And then I'll, I'll wrap up here with Miss Weishjohn. She says, I absolutely love having Abram in class. He is such a sweet little boy, very respectful, responsible, and helping others in class. Anytime he sees a neighbor needing help, he offers his assistance without my asking, and he does it in a very nice way. He is a great worker, and he's always doing the right thing. Ladies and gentlemen, my pleasure to represent for Hornet Park, Avery and Carlisle. Central Elementary School, Mr. Buckler. Good evening, everyone. I'm just going to give a, a quick update of some things that are going on at Central. Uh, spring is a busy testing time, especially for the third graders. We've already done the applied skills portion of ISTEP, and we've taken iRead that Mr. Collins will be talking about later on in the meeting. Uh, the week of the 29th uh, will be the second part of ISTEP, and that's the multiple choice section. And then the week after that, we'll start testing in WEA with the second graders probably to give the third graders a break, and then they'll test that next week. So that's coming up before the next board meeting, so I wanted everyone to be prepared. <coughs> Mrs. Provost already mentioned our spring carnival is Friday the 26th. It's at Hornet Park. It's for both schools. We're looking for volunteers. First and foremost, we want people to come, but we're going to need a lot of volunteers um, to get that to be successful. So if you would like to volunteer, call Central and ask to speak to Mrs. Commodo, and she'll be able to hook you up with that. <coughs> also, our third annual book nick at Sarah Bolton Park is the 9th of May, which is, again, a little bit far off, but I want to give people a chance to get that on their calendar. Uh, this year, we're adding a program by the third graders. The new music teacher, Mrs. Etter, is working with the third grade students, and so they'll do their spring program at the book nick. Due to the construction and lack of parking, uh, Mr. Gearhart at the middle school has opened up his parking lot for us, and so we'll have a shuttle that will go back and forth from the park to uh, the middle school so that we can have plenty of parking for everyone. So those are just some exciting things that are coming up in Central. I'm going to have Madeline Schwartz come up first. She is our February student of the month. Madeline is a third grader in Mr. Cowan's class. Mr. Cowan states that Madeline is a hard worker that does her personal best in the classroom. Mrs. Sutton, our teacher, praises Madeline as a wonderful student who is always respectful of others and a bright spot in her day. She's a very creative, enthusiastic learner who always puts her heart, soul, and voice into everything that she creates. Mrs. Etter, the music teacher, states that Madeline does a great job during music class. She is always quiet and follows directions. She sets a good example for the other students and doesn't have to be reminded to do the right thing. Finally, Mrs. Weishjohn, our applied technology teacher, reports that she absolutely loves having Madeline in class. She, is always, she has always been very kind. Madeline is quiet but always says the right thing and it shows in her work. She is very successful in all of her technology projects. It gives me great pleasure to introduce Madeline Schwartz, our February student. is Ava Fritch. Come on up, Ava. <laughs> Ava is the second grader in Mr. Sutton's class, and Mr. Sutton is here this evening. He states that Ava is an old soul whose kindness and caring is beyond her years. She is a hard worker and a great role model to others. Ava will be able to accomplish anything she puts her mind to. She will be one of those people who will make a notable difference in the world once she is done with her education. In Applied Technology, Mrs. Weishjohn says Ava is a very sweet, well-mannered little girl and brightens up her day. 
She is a role model in class and is always modeling the right behavior. Ava is always willing to help classmates and she does a wonderful job with her computer skills. In music, Mrs. Edder sees a sweet, smart, helpful, and respectful girl. Mr. Hubble, a teacher on Ava's team, reports Ava is an extremely caring and a hard worker. She is a model student. Ava is always putting others before herself. She is an excellent student who is constantly giving maximum effort. Finally, Mrs. Sutton praises that Ava provides her with a hug, a smile, and a good morning each day. She is extremely polite, kind to others, willing to tackle any challenge, compassionate to others, and a very considerate girl. She is a born leader and is a great example of some of the best kids around. I am pleased to present Ava Fritch, our March Student of the Month. I want to take just one other minute to point out that my brother Jackson is in third grade and Cooper is in second grade as well. And they have been students of month at Central. They just weren't chosen to come here. So all of the Fritch kids at Central have been recognized as students of the month at some time during the year. So that's <laughs> Chicago. Uh, as Mr. Buckler indicated, we have uh, I Step Clubs coming up on beginning on 429, and this year we're going to uh, have all 460 of our students do the online version, so that will be a challenge for us, uh, and we encourage everyone to do those things that we know help, uh, which is get a good night's rest, eat breakfast in the morning, and by the way, Beach Grove Middle School has uh, universal free breakfast, so if you can't eat at home, can come to school and eat. I uh, want to congratulate Devin Hunter. I told you last time that he has won our school-wide spelling bee the last two years. Um, he went on and placed in the top 10 in regionals at IUPUI last month, so congratulations to him. Uh, we had 151 students uh, on the A and B honor roll for our third nine weeks, and uh, the final highlight, uh, is that we have 70 plus track participants this year. And just to kind of add to what Mr. Buckler indicated, if you're coming to the track meet, our track parking is quite limited uh, with Main Street being closed. So for Beach Grove patrons, if you would park in our parking lot and walk down, that would free up some space for our visitors. And uh, now for, uh, well, I guess our first student of the month, Zach Brigham is uh, playing baseball right now, so he's not here. I've invited him to come back at the May board, board meeting, and uh, we'll honor him then. Our second student of the month is Tiffany Ellenberg. If you'd come up, please. Uh, Mr. Ott is representing Team Einstein tonight, and this is uh, what, what Team Einstein has to say. Team Einstein selects Tiffany Ellenberg as its Student of the Month. Tiffany has distinguished herself so far this year as a model student in our learning community. She has an exceptional work ethic and is dedicated to living and embodying the school's core values. Tiffany is highly respected by Beach Grove Middle School teachers and students because of her kind personality and courtesy toward others. Tiffany pays careful attention in class, is always on task, and seeks help when she needs it. She then uses this knowledge to raise the level of achievement of those students around her. She never fails to respect herself, her classmates, and her teachers. Tiffany is a great young lady, a wonderful student, and Team Einstein's Student of the Month. Congratulations. They sort of um, come as a partnership tonight, um, representative of one of our project-based activities. So if I could have Michelle Chapman and Donald Colbert come up. 
We would like to recognize them for their efforts um, in developing our snack shop at the HEA. Um, we're very pleased to recognize both Michelle and Donald as our February and March student of the month. Since February, they developed our HEA snack shop and they manage that every day. Um, Donald is the son of Larry and Laura Tolbert and is a junior at the Hornet and Richmond Academy. Donald is a full-time student and attends one block at the high school. Donald has a keen interest in technology and after high school, he plans to study computer programming at ITT. Michelle is the daughter of Clint Chapman and is a junior at the HEA. She is also a full-time student and is a Hornet Park bus monitor every afternoon. Michelle is interested in attending Vincennes University and would like to pursue a career in psychology. Um, in February, Donald and Michelle worked together in the development of our snack shop. With the help of Mrs. Condon and Mr. Mr. Starks, Donald and Michelle created a spreadsheet to track and record inventory, manage sales, and monitor profit. Each day they count and record product in the afternoon monitor sales throughout the day, and determine their profit. With the profit they have earned thus far, they have purchased a refrigerator for the snack shop. As a result, they have learned several lessons in managing a business. Donald stated to me today, I understand the idea of loss in business when we cannot account for product. I understand that product count is important in managing a business, maintaining a profit. Michelle stated, Business owners must be accountable for their mistakes and must be very accurate. Michelle also stated that business partners must learn to work together and communicate. Communication is important in a business partnership. We often hear them communicating <laughs> in the back room as they're counting product. And I think both would agree that communication has been a key to their success in business. Mrs. Condon commented today that she has recognized much personal growth in both students as they have embraced the challenges and successes of business management. We congratulate both of these students at, for, the, for their efforts at the HEA and we look forward to their continued success in the future. Good evening. Uh, just a couple things I want to touch base with uh, before uh, we do some presentations and recognitions. Uh, tomorrow's our big uh, NIET visit at the high school, and that's the National Institute uh, for Excellence in Teaching. Uh, they're going to be coming and evaluating TAP High School, so we're looking forward to that, and it's going to be a fun day. And our spring sports are kicked off. We have things going on uh, all over with softball, bat, ba uh, baseball, uh, tracks going on tonight girls tennis, Molly, who's one of the students of the month, uh, won her tennis match. That's the thing I told her before uh, uh, Before coming. I said, if you have to play longer to win, do that. She won. She's here tonight as well. And then we also have boys golf kicked off and going on well. So we have a lot of activities for, for our students going on. Uh, I'd like to start by uh, introducing and, and recognizing our faculty student of the month. And that was Jimmy Johnson this year, or this month. Uh, uh, Mr. Johnson uh, teaches CAD and communication processing at the high school. He's also our SDS specialist at the high school as well. He spends a lot of time um, uh, with students facilitating and coaching them on, on Beach Leaf, which is our newspaper, as well as our, our uh, student yearbook. Uh, he works very diligent at what he does. He puts a lot of extra time in, so we're very proud of uh, Jimmy Johnson. Uh, at C9, we had three Student of the Months uh, this month uh, for the month of April. One of them was Jessie Harbo. Uh, she was uh, in biomedical uh, science. Uh, Jessie's always uh, respectful and diligent. He shows determination and per perseverance when it comes to uh, his biomed labs, activities, and research, and that's from Mrs. King, his teacher. Um, his uh, Mrs. Mr. Bonner is Kodiak McBrary's um, uh, drafting and CAD teacher as well, and Kodiak is going to represent Beecher High School in the drafting CAD program at the Regional Skills Competition, which is a USA competition and championship, uh, which is coming up soon. And he's going to make, uh, or at least Kodiak's going to make Auto CAD part of his uh, life. That's what he wants to pursue as a career. And then Trayvon Sevion uh, in veterinary assisting. 
Uh, Mrs. Smith says that uh, Trayvon works uh, very hard and is determined with everything he does. He is always motivated to do his best, and he always encourages his peers to get the best out of them as well. So we had three students at the uh, uh, C9 that we wanted to recognize, too. Very proud of all three of those students. First tonight, we want to recognize Molly Wolf. Come on up, Molly. Molly's a junior. teacher here at the high school. Uh, Molly's G, uh, GPA is 4.0. She uh, ranks 8th out of her class of 181. She's in everything. Uh, Who's your girl state representative for us? She's a student council president, a Horton mentor, cheerleading squad, spell bowl, Spanish club, Spanish honor society, uh, tennis, and school community council. So she's got a full plate. Uh, service projects that she's involved in. She's been involved with Peyton Manning Children Hospital, the Richard Luger Symposium, the Spirit of Sports participant, and the Mayor's Youth Council as well. Uh, as a student council president, uh, she's been very instrumental in, in, in uh, putting together various charitable activities for us this year at the high school. Under her direction, our student council has been involved with making cheese balls uh, at, with one of the sororities, uh, participated, in, participated in Brian's uh, trike race for the visually impaired. Uh, she's part of the recycling program throughout the building, and she's worked on the canned food drive for, and also the winter coat drive this year. So she's been really busy on helping Beach Grove be very uh, um, in, involved with community service. Her future plans are to go to Purdue University, good school, um, and, and, and uh, work a major in elementary education as well. Uh, Mrs. Higgins, one of her teachers, uh, has for art, and she says, Molly's in my art appreciation class and shows remarkable skill and deep, higher level thinking with the ability to articulate her thoughts in words and writing. She never misses school and always has, has her assignment completed to the best of her ability and on time. I am not only proud of her achievements and her work ethic, but she is mature beyond her years, sweet natured, and a nice young woman. Molly Work. second in the class of 219. Uh, he's very involved too. Uh, he spends a lot of time, 12 months a year, playing basketball. Uh, he's in a renaissance committee which helps select the Hall of Fame representatives on, on out in our hallway in the front office. Spanish club and also the Spanish Honor Society. But what's not right down here, he also works here at Beach Grove High School uh, for Mr. Clevenger. Anytime we have some type of event uh, that comes up, uh, comes up uh, Mr. Clevenger hires Tommy and some other students to come and, and uh, work at, as well as uh, our athletic events as well. Uh, his future plans, he's leaning on going back to Purdue, another Purdue uh, person, uh, and majoring in the field of science. Uh, he's really caught the bug of science and he's very, very smart in that area. So we're very proud of Tommy. Uh, Mrs. Dawson said that he's diligent and hardworking student and athlete. Always prepared for class with a very positive attitude. I have him in, his, in her speech class this year and he had her in honors English last year. Uh, he, and he does it, uh, he always tries to take the hardest classes because he wants to be the best he can possibly be. And so again, we're very proud to introduce to you Tommy Pick. Uh, good evening. Um, mine's going to be short and sweet. Um, both of my students of the month um, are not here uh, running in the middle school track meet. So, Next month, I will get to introduce three students, um, but it was their first track meet, and I couldn't say the school board meeting is more important uh, than the track meet, especially with the weather outside. So, um, but I do have a couple things that I want to update you on South Grove. Um, actually, some uh, accolades for some of my teachers. Uh, in March, we went to the TAP National Conference, uh, the administrators and, and uh, master teachers and some of the mentor teachers. And this is the TAP National Magazine that everybody at that conference uh, was given, and on page 14, 
is our very own Dee Dee Horn, who is the master teacher at South Grove Intermediate School. Dee Dee was interviewed for this article on using the, the portal for TAP to help teachers. And when they called her, she didn't really like the angle of the story that they wanted her to go. So she pitched another idea and they went with that. So it's, um, it even says Dee Dee Horn's tips for getting career teachers started. So uh, kind of interesting and exciting that one of our own teachers here from Beach Grove was published in a national magazine uh, on making teachers better. So congratulations to her. And then the other accolade that I wanted to give a shout out tonight was to Judy Clefane. Judy Clefane is South Grove's science and technology teacher. She just received a $500 STEM grant uh, from the Tech Point Foundation for Youth. Her project was entitled Toy Time and was one of uh, only 17 chosen. So Judy's class is new at South Grove this year. It incorporates technology and science, which we all know is, is the push for the future. Um, and it's innovative in the sense that it does combine those two together. Students are engaged in daily learning about science using technology as the medium. And uh, thanks to Judy, she has developed Mastermind in this whole curriculum uh, on her own. So we're very proud of that uh, addition because it feeds right into what they're going to do at the middle school and then off up with the high school with science and technology. So uh, very proud of her as well. And that's all that I have. And next month I will introduce three students of the month from South Grove. Thank you. talk to you about something before you leave and then you're either walking this day for the business portion or you're free to leave. I would just like to recognize two teachers that we have that are retiring this year. Between them they have a combined 73 years of teaching experience and one of them is Miss Boss. Ms. Boss. is a, a bit a little personal for me because he was my teacher. He helped me find my, you wouldn't be able to tell now, he'll help me help me find my inner running nerd uh, 25 plus years ago, and that's Mr. Ott. That's it, thank you. Start with the curriculum and tap update, please. And sure. Um, what I'd like to do is keep you informed. So if someone asks you a question or that you might at least know a little bit about what's going on. So that's uh, some of the topics that we've done recently I wanted to share with you. First of all, ISTEP's done in two pieces. Uh, the first one was the applied skill, which is the writing. We did that paper and pencil that's been turned in. The next part is the multiple choice. And this year, we're going to do it all online. Last year, we just had certain grades that we did it, but this year, it'll be everybody. So that the tech people did a wonderful job of making sure that everyone's doing the right thing. But um, that'll be a little different. Um, and we put the dates here so you know when that, that part will be done. The other thing that's kind of confusing is, is the high school also gives them high step, but it's by a different company, and it's called a little different. So if you hear of ECA, that's into course assessments, that's equivalent to ISTEP at the high school. Different company. Uh, the ones that really count as far as accreditation is the English 10 and the Algebra 1. They also give a science test along the two, but that doesn't count according to that. So if you hear anything about that, um, this the ECA is the high school version of ISTEP. Um, I read was a, a law that was passed last year where every student has to pass that to go to the fourth grade. Um, so we just got finished with that. We did it all online this time. Last year, last year we did a paper and pencil and just did the summer online. But it was so successful during the summer that we did it all online. Got our results back right away. We had to start with 83.7% of the kids passed it the first time around. Then we have to take out the kids who have waivers. Those are the kids through if their parent and their special education teacher have come to an agreement that since they have an individualized program, they'll be going on because the, the reading is at their level. Um, then we will remediate the kids during the summer who still haven't passed, and then from that we'll get a, a final percentage. Uh, usually what we aim at is 90%. Uh, what we need is about five kids to pass it. We had a whole a lot of kids that were one or two points away. So I think five kids is 
they'll reach that right away. So I think we will reach our goal with 90%. That's my uh, guess on the whole thing. The next thing is we uh, apply for the acuity grant. This is the state's grant that has um, a t testing procedure that we can do throughout the year uh, in grades, in the I-STEP grades, to tell them whether they're going to pass the I-STEP or not. It does not cost us anything, and we do it. We have to have at least 90% of our kids to participate. So usually by the end of the year, you know pretty much which ones are probably going to pass and which ones probably will not. But that is something we've applied for and received each year. Um, the other thing I thought was interesting that you might know with the uh, things that are going on in the federal government, we've been told that if things continue the way it is, there will probably be a 5% cut in the federal grants. Uh, we have two federal grants, uh, Title I and Title II, so this kind of gives you an idea of what kind of uh, cuts we might have back. Title I is remediation, and then Title II is professional development. This is where we hire our um, TAP uh, assistants uh, to work with us. Um, the last thing I want to uh, mention, I wanted to make you aware of, we do have the national TAP people, which is the NIET people, come into each of our schools and evaluate our programs and give us advice. This is really um, wonderful to have someone from a national level come in and say, you know, are you comparable or better, or how are you doing national-wise? And so each of our buildings are having these visits by the national people called the NIET, which is an organization that TAP hires to work with them. And uh, in the past, we've had really good results, and I don't expect anything but uh, having wonderful results. Dr. Hannon? Well, tonight I just wanted to take a couple minutes um, to highlight a really neat program that I wasn't sure that you as a board um, sort of knew even, even happened. Um, and I wanted to invite you to this very special event. Um, on Friday, May the 3rd, uh, our special education preschool, um, we, we have our special education preschool run by Ms. Kathy Weisenbach um, over at Hornet Park. They are um, participants with the other three member districts from Southside Special Services in a day of day-long event called Special Olympics of Indiana's Young Athletes Day. This is an incredible program. We have our morning uh, preschool kiddos, um, I guess I should say where it's taking place. Um, this year, it's going to take place at Franklin Central High School at their football field. Um, again, it's on May 3rd. Last year, we were lucky enough to host this very special event. It rotates every year among our member districts. Um, the morning preschool class has an opening ceremonies event. It is about the most priceless thing you've ever seen at 9.15. And then the afternoon preschool has their opening ceremony at 12.45. Uh, the boys and girls, and we're talking about three and four year olds, participate in athletic events that are um, of an Olympic nature uh, all across the um, football stadium there at Franklin Central High School. Um, Ms. Kathy has been accused of doping. You know, we, we always <laughs> do very well um, in this competition. <laughs> just kidding, public. Um, they, they, it is just truly um, one of my favorite days of our entire school year. Um, the boys and girls um, clearly present with, with some special issues, and they are able to overcome those issues in this, um, this framework. It is sponsored by Special Olympics of Indiana, so it's very rigorous as far as volunteer participation, um, training, and um, really it's, just, it's, it's um, just a highlight of the year. So if you have a moment, and clearly if it doesn't work for you this year, you'll have the opportunity every year. Um, if you just join us for you know, 30 minutes, it, it is one of those events that can, can really make an imprint on your heart. It's, it's, it's a beautiful thing. So we are grateful to Miss Kathy for all the work that she does with the boys and girls to really get them ready. Um, Dr. Keeley and his family have been very active volunteer participants in the program and we're, we're grateful for that. Um, so just a true community event and, and something that you just would walk away feeling really good about. So just wanted to let you know about that because sometimes those are things that you might not hear about. That's all I had tonight. I just thought it would be fun to highlight that special event. Thank you. Melody? Yes. Um, a couple things. I had the privilege of attending the TAP conference, and several of our teachers and administrators presented on during that conference. It was really wonderful. <clears throat> and um, 
And of course, our own Hornet Park Elementary that was highlighted as one of the six showcase schools from across the nation. So that was a really wonderful thing. So I know they brought the banner back, and that was a, that was a very cool thing to see. So I was glad to go there. Um, then we've had a, some great local coverage again. I don't know if you saw it during spring break for those of you who were gone, but um, our past high school principal, Harvey Warner, was featured as the cover story on Southside Times for the Civil War show that he brought to the high school, which benefits the Renaissance program. So it was a really neat story. So if you can look at that past copy, the end of March, uh, make sure you pick it up because it, it's a neat story. Um, this is the month for conferences for me, <laughs> it seems like. Um, the National School Public Relations Association conference is this month, which I'll be attending. And I'm also going to be attending the um, as one for the Beach Education Foundation, which is a national school education um, foundation conference also. So I'll be gone about four days during this month just to attend those two conferences. So I'm excited about that. Um, we had a Barnes & Noble book fair at um, on March 17th. And one of the highlights is that we also highlighted Brad Lamar was there from middle school and signed copies of his new book. And so we had proceeds from that. We did, um, I was there with some other volunteers and we did crafts that day for kids and some other things um, all afternoon on that Sunday afternoon. And because of doing all that, um, we raised $607.14 for the Education Foundation. So we're really happy that we were able to get that money again, to help us support teacher grants and, and scholarships. So we're excited about that. Um, make sure you have in your calendar May 8th for the district-wide art show. Um, that is coming up, and you won't want to miss it. It's going to, I know, be even better than ever. So um, it's a great thing. And um, TCU is going to um, sponsor uh, getting framed and matted the first place award. Um, and they're doing a couple other special things for our art teachers. Um, as they set up and take down, so I'm excited to partner with them this year. Um, and then a special note, you probably saw it on here, but today's my one year anniversary with Beach Grove City Schools. Yay. And so <laughs> um, I feel really privileged to, to be able to serve such a wonderful district and, you know, get to learn about even more than I even knew as a school board member. It's just been a real privilege to be able to work with all the administrators, teachers, staff, it's been an awesome experience, so I love that. And then I want to recognize two people, um, one that we'll do next month too, but you might notice our overhead door over here has been painted. Janae Sutton, um, one of our art teachers, and she had students come in during spring break, <clears throat> and they painted that overhead door, and they just did a fantastic job. Um, so it, it's really neat. I came in here a little bit during spring break, and they were painting, and having a great time, so it was wonderful. Um, and then, because she would never mention this herself, but Erin Probus, our principal from Hornet Park, um, is a locks of love person, and you might notice a new hairdo. Which is very nice. Which, which looks nice. great. But Erin um, has actually donated her height in hair, plus one inch. So five feet, three inches of hair she's donated to Locks of Love. So I just want, that's not something she would say, and it's just one of the very neat things that our principals and staff do here all the time, and I just wanted to recognize her for that. Thank you. So that's it. Okay, um, there aren't very many of us here tonight, so you guys are gonna have to take turns you know, making the motions. So we need a motion to approve the minutes for a February 12th regular meeting and the special session minute for March 12th and March 18th. Motion to approve the minutes as presented. Rick. I will second. Tim, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And claims. We need a motion to approve the claims as presented. Um, as presented. I'll make a motion to approve. Nancy. No, second. Tammy, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Dr. Keeley, business update. Absolutely. Um, I have been working diligently the last six weeks probably with our food service company called Chartwell. I brought that to you about a year ago um, as we did our RFP request for proposal and all that. And I have no reason. We've done a survey and the feedback I've had overall um, 
even in areas where I feel like we've had a couple of hiccups during the school year, they've been responsive and I've given them a couple more goals to work on for the next year. But the number one criteria that um, I was looking at when we were evaluating Chartwells is whether or not they financially, fiscally uh, fulfilled their contract. And they did. And so I can't argue at all they made more money than we made on our own. The comments from the general uh, parent point of view, um, I've had a lot more positives than I've had negatives. And food service, lunches every day, breakfast every day, intercession food, after school now, meals, it's very challenging. And so you're going to always have a couple of hiccups. So I, I feel like we're on the positive and the responsive. And so I'll work with the principals in the next month to two months to work on their cafeterias. We're going to upgrade Central Elementary's uh, cafeteria. Um, we're buying new equipment with the money that they generated during the year. So we're rolling those dollars right over for a positive. Because of those things, I just want to recommend uh, that you consider approving the contract. We have to do this annually. We have an, um, kind of a regulation the state board forces you to do a, uh, an annual um, evaluation and a decision on that. So that's the first item. Do you have like a roundabout number as to how much we're saving using Charwell versus what we were doing previously? It's not, it's not dollars. Yeah, it's not dollars. Food service is very different. When you bring in dollars from your lunch programs, I'm going to talk about lunch money here in a minute, but when you bring in dollars like that, it has nothing to do with our school corporation budget per se. It's a food service account, and so it's held over here. Okay. And so we buy commodities, food, and we generate the lunch with all of that. So if there's profit in there, it stays in there. And then any money that is, ends up in there ends up going to a new oven or a new wheelie cart or a, a kind of a third bay area here in the high school cafeteria. And so they use the money, any, any profit, to go right to the kids again. So it's not a, it, it doesn't really kind of play into. But do you um, feel that we're benefiting from it more financially? That we had 6%. To do more? Yeah, we had a 6% increase oh, okay. of dollars there, that there we, we yeah, we had okay. a 6% increase of dollars on hand that and I'm able to turn right around. Yeah, and, I, and I'm actually asked okay. to, for an approval of $32,000 expenditure on uh, Mr. Buckler's cafeteria because it was not as safe as it needed to be. So we're making two lines. And so it's kind of a different separate budgeting set area, but it's, it's going very positive. Um, we have some areas where we can improve. The middle school cafeteria is work area for the workers. It's just too compact. And so we have to continue to work on some improvements there. But um, overall, I'm very pleased. I'm very pleased. And, and that doesn't say, uh, you know, there's some things we could improve on, but I'm very pleased where we're at right now. And I would highly recommend uh, keeping chart bills. Tom, talk very quickly about indirect cost and how we benefit from that currently. Sure. Um, right now, every year, and this has been going on ever since I've been business manager and before me, um, there's a formula through the federal government that's called indirect cost, and it's a percentage that calculates the total dollars uh, that are expended on personnel, um, total dollars on lunches, yeah, you know, $480,000, and then you take a percentage of that and we heat the area, we house the kitchen, we maintain, we wax the floors, and so we do a lot of other indirect things that, to help support the food service grouping, okay? And since we send our maintenance department over there and we have custodial cleaning, I mean, you can imagine how much that takes to clean the, the whole cafeteria every single day. We have that percentage, and there's about $158,000 that we profit into the general fund on an annual basis. That's a lot of money. And that's that those dollars that when you look at that program, um, you know, Charcoal's doesn't profit from that. You know, they, uh, we, we house them and help them. And then they're, you know, some of their employees are employed with us through the whole cooperative, you know, symbiotic relationship thing. And then we end up getting about $158,000. And uh, we will end up receiving that in May, um, Brian. So we'll end up sending them a bill and receiving those dollars in there. So it's a really good cooperation, and it's nice now to have a new, 
nutrition level. I mean, it's so professionally run that we didn't have all the expertise. And I knew that was kind of a flaw where we could get better. We were good. I mean, we were good. But a dietitian and, and just some of those federal regulations, our calorie count, they know carbs, they know exactly what the kids are eating every day. And so it's kind of a neat process, uh, a neat changeover that we've had. Not just that, it's the, the, and I know this from my kids and from having friends that go to school, is the, the, uh, the choices, the or just of food. the quality of choices yeah. of just growing. Yeah. And, they're, and they're, actually, they're quite a bit healthier when you look at the calorie content, and the kids like it. Automatic, they guarantee a fresh fruit, fresh vegetable every single day. And we weren't, we weren't able to do that, but now the purchasing power of all these, all these school corporations together through a national company, we're able to be one stop, just kind of like a Coke dealer. Or, you know, we're just one stop along their trail. And so, yeah, the commodities. It's, it's a neat, you know, it's a neat process. So it's been good. And I've had, heard a lot of positive comments. Pizza's good. You know, I've had it, so it's good. Thank you. Uh, we'd like to make a motion to approve the contract, please. I'll make a motion to approve the contract renewal with Charlotte. Rick, we'd like to second, please. Tim, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Now we need to talk about lunch price. Yeah. <coughs> because of the because of a percentage of free and reduced lunches that we are reimbursed back from the federal government, which actually helps and helped us this year produce more dollars in that fund. There is a Indiana, state of Indiana regulation that the dollars that come in and income from the federal government on reimbursement need to equal, be equalized per lunch for the price that you, you uh, pay for anybody who pays for lunch. And I did a survey, actually I asked Kelly Deal, our food service director, to look at all the area school corporations, Franklin Township, Warren Township, Perry Township, Decatur, and we are we were underpriced and we haven't raised prices in five years? Four or three? I think. It's, it's been a while. Well they did the they did the mathematical ca calculation on our dollars for the annual expenditure in, from the last year. And by these state regulations, we have to increase our prices to just come up to where the federal reimbursement dollar is. Okay. And that equates to 10 cents. So it's still very reasonable. In the update, I gave you each one of the dollars. High school is $2.20 for lunch, and that's a full lunch uh, with the milk and everything. Middle school will be $2.20. South Grove, $2.10. Central and Hornet Park, $2.10. So our elementary grade levels will all be $2.10. And because we have a higher, bigger portions at the high school, 220. As I compared to all five districts around us, we're right in line with them. And some of them, you know, I won't name some of them, but some of them are 245, 265 at the high school level. So just $2.20, I still believe to be very reasonable. Um, but I need to have that approval uh, considered so that we remain in the, the guidelines of the federal government, basically. Can we put a Peach Grove Cafe sign on Emerson and point them down this way and at lunch, because I'd like to pay two twenty for lunch. <laughs> Neon, yeah. two twenty is uh, a good price. I motion agree. to approve the increase. Rick, second. Who would like to make a second, please? I'll second. Nancy Hall in favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed. Okay. How about our technology common school loan? Yeah, in the spring every year we have the opportunity to get a common school technology loan, and this is a reoccurring loan that when we get it this year we have one that was five years ago that dropped off because you can't finance them over five years and so we have this reoccurring uh, going on um, so that one is the technology loan and it can only go up a certain number of dollars per student and so we get about 285 287 thousand um, dollars and they calculate that based on our student population okay the other part though you want to approve that first, and then I'll explain the other one because the other one's a much bigger deal than For this. For the construction one? Yeah, it's the same process, okay. but it's a lot more money. We don't have to spend the money for oh, yeah. a long period of time, mm -hmm. three years, and we're in a position right now that our taxes are not receding enough revenue so that if we have a roof emergency, 
if we had an HVAC emergency, if we had a serious problem that would shut down a school, right now we don't have cash balances because of our problem with the taxes and the tax caps that we've explained month after month after month to make me feel comfortable or Dr. Kaiser feel comfortable that we have kind of a cushion in case of an emergency. And so the same, we qualify as a school because of our population and where we're at, uh, being an urban district, to get a common school construction loan. And it's different than the technology loan. But it's under the same State Board of Accounts and the Indiana Department of Education regulations, okay? Um, they're, they're doled out in the exact same way. And Dr. Kaiser and I would like to recommend us putting in an application. We have to show a need that we need the money. So we have asked performance services to show that over the course of the next three years, we don't have enough money in capital projects fund. And we had explained that those were zeros. So this is one of those unique solutions that we've identified where if we had an emergency or if we want to replace a boiler or if we were going to have heat problems or something's outdated and dangerous, we, don't, we, we wouldn't have to have an emergency and go ask for an emergency loan. Instead, we'd cover it here. And if in, in the DUAP process that we're going to do in the next six weeks, things go very positive, we could get this loan and we could give it back. We could just receive it right back, or we could stop the process at any point. But are you actually getting the loan, or are you just applying in case you need the loan? Right now, we're just asking to apply for it, because I need your permission to apply for both loans. And we have until May 3rd to determine this. So yeah. if we go to the DUAP process and they let us restructure the one loan that we've talked about, we may not even apply for it. Right. Or we may go ahead and apply for it. And let's say first year we don't really need it. The money just sits in the in the in the state treasury. So we don't make payments on it. No, we don't until make you use that, that unless you know. use it all. So it's just sitting there it's as just, a gift. No. It sort of well. Yes. I mean, you know what I'm saying. It's very low interest, but from my standpoint, where we got to cut a check, and I go to Brown and I go, we got this thirty thousand dollar problem. What are we going to do? And he goes, I don't know. What are you going to do? I don't have to. You know, it gives us. It gives us flexibility in spending power that if we have an emergency, and, and, and I'll tell you what, the roof, roofs and things like that, it's, it's huge. When we did, redid the middle school roof just you know a few years ago, five, four years ago, $480,000. That was huge. And, and it's much better now. So, but before we did that, we had trash cans standing in the hallway, and water was always being caught in trash cans. And we want to avoid some of those issues, and we don't have the flexibility in our capital projects plan that I continue to kind of mold and talk about. I just wanted people watching that understand Absolutely. that you're not just taking out the loan to take out the loan in case. Right. You're not going to take out the loan until you need it. Absolutely. It's, yeah. kind, of like, it's kind of like a piggy bank. So a perfect example of South Grove, the HVAC in that building could could stop working at any time. Right. It'd probably be two or $300,000 to replace it. So we could go ahead and, you know, bid the project, do it, and then as the invoices come in, we submit them to the state, they pay them. And then, so we only have to pay back what we use, so it's like a, a piggy bank there. And at the end of the three years, if we don't use the money, nothing happens. Okay. Or if we use 50000 it's kind of an emergency loan that we can apply for ahead of time and utilize it. Like you said, we'll, uh, we'll know by, uh, May 3rd, whether we want to move forward with or not, but it's kind of a good uh, safety net. For what us. kind of interest is on that note? Four percent, four to seven percent. Uh, the ones are in recent times have been less than four. Our technology loans, I think, Brian have been four, so that's pretty good, you know, right now. Anybody else have any other questions? So, we make a motion that for uh, approval to apply for the common school construction loan. I'll make a no. motion to uh, Jim? apply for that. You would like to second, please. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, now back to the technology law. Right? Now we're back to the technology law. You just want us to approve it since you talked about it a little bit. It's, it's, it's that reoccurring one that we, we do. And because of CPF, we have to have internet. Right. We can't function as a school now that we have the 
the tablets and, and the way we, you know, school is evolving. Um, we don't have the dollars uh, freed up because transportation now takes up a lot of those technology dollars. And so our technology account is this revolving five-year account where they drop off and it comes back on. So um, I highly recommend it. I think we're, uh, we're probably going to need, unless, unless something changes with tax caps and things, we're probably just going to be in this pattern. Um, it's good to have a, a plan. Uh, but I wish it was a better plan, but sure. this is our plan right now. Anybody else have any questions about the technology? Who would like to make a motion to apply for that? I'll make a motion to apply for the technology. Tam, I'll second. Rick, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. Can I, can I do the personnel real quick? Is that... Yeah. I was yeah, did I skip right over it? I don't know if I'm included. I think it's on here. It's a really short photo. It's awesome. Okay. So it should have just said business and personnel instead of just business. Okay. Okay. Sure. I wanted to make sure that we uh, we brought this up because I do have five teachers listed on the personnel report, the PDF that went out. Connie Holler, Beach Grove High School, 32 years. Susie Burt, Central Elementary, 40 years. Jeff Ott. Beach Grove Middle School, 39 years experience. Laura, Beach Grove Middle School, 29 years. And Diana Boss, Hornet Park Elementary, 34 years. Those five teachers, outstanding service, outstanding in the classroom, outstanding to show up tonight. I mean, it just shows you their dedication and we're gonna miss them. Um, so I just wanted to make sure everybody uh, I knew that they were in the personnel report, and at the end of the year, we will have our, our uh, you know, we'll take an opportunity to uh, acknowledge their years of service and ask their principals to, to you know, say a couple of words. But on, on camera, I just wanted to make sure that um, everybody knew that was in there. How would you also talk about our high school staff member who's taking a new leadership position, Todd? Yeah, he's not included because of the timing. Okay. Well, we got the letter today. Okay. So if you want to prove it today, you can. Okay. <laughs> uh, at the high school, Todd Sackstetter, we want to congratulate him. He has turned in uh, his letter of resignation because he is taking the athletic director job at Franklin County, which is Brookville. It's uh, out to the east over by uh, Cincinnati. And uh, that's his hometown. He is a uh, hometown hero there. And, and to be named athletic director out there is a wonderful career step for him, so we're really excited. Um, I had not gotten the letter, so. We just uh, put it in the Dropbox this afternoon. Okay, so, so it was in there in PDF. And so we want to congratulate Todd. Um, he knows all, all the sports and everything, and he'll do an outstanding job with that. So uh, we want to wish him well. He will finish out you know, his regular contract, the school year and everything, but next fall, um, that's a social studies uh, position and, and coaching thing and stuff. Do you need us to approve all these personnel? Yeah, they just do it. Yeah, if you have motion. any questions, um, <clears throat> we make a motion to approve the personnel. Ten. Who would second, please? Nancy, all in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? Okay, and then um, Paul, do you want to talk about the student code of conduct? Yes, and we. Um, do we miss something? Yeah, we also have the calendar. Oh, I went down too far. Okay. Uh, very, calendar very, first? calendar's okay. real simple. Uh, actually, Tammy even made this suggestion, and ironically, when I met with the teachers the next day, they said, can we build a snow day in and not have four days of President's Day? And I said, that's a great idea. So uh, we picked uh, May 16th. Uh, uh, and so instead of having four days of President's Day next year, we'll have three. And then we'll have a day in May on May 16th. If we don't use it as a snow makeup day, it'll be a day off. If we do, we'll make it up then. And that helps us not having to add it to the end of the year. So uh, it's the same calendar with the exception of that change. And so we ask you for approval on that. And then we'll send an email out to parents to get that uh, on the web page so they know. I don't think that'll be a Im big impact. I don't know how many parents take that as a vacation. But if everybody got something scheduled, they can go ahead and do it and be fine. But same thing with our teachers. So it's a minor change in our calendar for next year. Okay. So we make a motion to amend the calendar, please. I'll make a motion to amend. Rick, would like to second? 
I'll second. Tammy, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, softball fundraiser. And uh, I'm not sure what it is. I can't remember. Uh, Robin, you want to help me out on that? Trash bags. Oh, trash bags. I've already okay. seen it. Yes. <laughs> yes uh, trash bags and candles and cookie dough and stuff. My daughter hasn't brought it home yet, so mm -hmm. I should I, know I, that. I, Okay, we'd like to approve the fundraiser. Tim, second, please. I second. Tammy, thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, now we go to the student group. Can I talk about street staff? Those are the three things we're going Yes. Okay, very quickly, a strategic plan uh, to our community members. It is on our web page. Uh, Marilyn got that. Uh, uh, put up. Uh, Melody got that put up on the web page today, and uh, we have the skies falling here in the boardroom. Part of our uh, system, just. But uh, and that's on the web page. We invite parents to look at that, and community members give us any feedback. Uh, the board has not approved that yet. We want to leave that on there until the May board meeting, and we'll send an email out to all our patrons, and we'll. Uh, send it on Facebook and tweet it or whatever Robin does with all that social stuff to let parents know that it's out there, but it's on the web page now. One-to-one, um, -one, uh, we uh, had a meeting with our provider of our tablets. We were not pleased with uh, the stability of our tablets that we had bought for South Grove in the middle school. And so they have replaced, um, I think, almost 100% of the ones that were not functioning at their cost. Uh, they also, I told them, we owed them ninety thousand dollars. We weren't going to pay them, and they agreed to that because of all the, the blood, sweat, and tears that we've had over the last year with the tablets. And uh, they've also to agree, agreed to replace any tablet for the next three years that is not student damage. And you, know, if, you can tell if a kid really damages it, but if it's through wear and tear, uh, they're actually going to replace that or fix it at no cost to us. In addition, next year, they're going to take every tablet that we currently own, and they're, they're creating a new outer box cover for it, uh, which is much sturdier. Uh, the, the tablets itself are working well, but the materials that they were made with, there's some bending and some issues. They're going to fix those for free, and they're going to put a brand new outer box tablet on every single tablet that we have at no cost to us, plus the original tablets, which are in that room, they're going to trade those in at full value uh, and, and give us 360 new tablets in its place for K, K3. So we feel like they've really worked with us on that. Uh, we're one of the school, few schools that they're doing every grade level at some capacity. So we feel very pleased with what the CIM has come to the table to help us with that. Uh, in three years from now, I'm sure there'll be a device we can buy that's less expensive and even more durable. But the bottom line, they're going to get, they're going to warrant you their product for the next three years, uh, which we feel very pleased about that. And especially since they're really crediting us for ninety thousand dollars that we still owe them and, and everything else. And, and the last thing is that we are going to actively pursue corporate sponsorships, as Dr. Keeley has highlighted many times, because of property tax caps and increased assessed valuation, we really have no money in CPF. So we're in the process of going out, talking to vendors. The athletic department has a list of five people they're going to go to. I have some others. And we're going to really go out there and beat the bushes and try to get corporate sponsorships. Uh, one for a digital sign at the, the pit. Another one for a digital sign leading into the high school. Uh, you know, we don't have the money to buy those. And those are pretty expensive. So that's going to be our starting point of some corporate sponsorships. So we have some ideas on that. So. Uh, that's kind of what we're doing in our spare time. We might as well just move on to student code of conduct since I've said it three times. Dr. Uh, <laughs> Phil Wagner, who's uh, he's uh, worked last week during spring break, so he's on vacation this week. He's walking the streets of Memphis with his wife, uh, trying to find Elvis Presley. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he normally talks about them. But in a nutshell, annual, we have to prove our code of conduct principles. I don't think there were any major changes. So it's really more of a, an annual blessing to approve the code of conduct so we can get accredited and, and uh, online to our parents. Somebody make a motion for that, please. I'll make a motion to approve that. Second. I'll second it. Thank you, Nancy. All in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? Okay, let's see. Do you want to talk about upcoming work session dates? 
Yeah, just that uh, I, I will be emailing you some dates. Uh, I think we sent some out, but we'll we set out again about trying to have some upcoming work sessions we've been talking about. We have one coming up uh, two weeks from tonight, and so between now and then we'll try to get some other dates to meet through the, the month uh, to really talk about the, the district evaluation process and, uh, and also talk about things we want to uh, discuss moving forward. Hopefully it's a follow-up to the work session we had with Mike Adamson from the School Board Association. Hopefully you found that beneficial and, and just to kind of do some planning moving in and really updates on budget and, and staffing patterns and, and moving forward. So uh, we'll get those dates to you. Any comments from the board? I have some. Anyone else that? Does? Uh, congratulations to all the students of the month. Also, to piggyback off of what Dr. Hammock said, um, on June 7th, 8th, and 9th, the Special Olympics will be held at Indiana State University. If you'd like to volunteer, you can go to surveymonkey.com, fill out their survey, and that will get you pointed in the right direction. And I would also like to comment, um, I don't know if people realize just how much Randy Clevenger does, um, not just dur during the school um, day, but also the extracurricular activities that he does. And one of them is uh, Mr. Warner's Civil War program, which is awesome if you're a Civil War buff of any type. Uh, I was able to go and, and, and check that out, and that was really neat. But I wanted to thank Mr. Clevenger for all of his time to do that. And uh, good luck to all the spring sports. That's it. Uh, I had the privilege last night of of uh, being on the field when uh, the uh, park board, the mayor named the uh, baseball diamond at Sarah Bolton Park after Dick Temple. And as Buddy made the comment, and, uh, you know, uh, that the mayor of Beach Grove and the superintendent of Beach Grove both played for Dick Temple, the mayor 40 years ago, and me 30 something years old. And, uh, I, and it was with him and, and, and uh, Jim Hensley. And the other, our other coach, who coached, uh, who's probably about 80 now, was there last night. And we were talking about all the hair and the, that I had on my head back in the 70s, even the facial hair. <laughs> and he never put two and two together because of Paul Kaiser now and, and how I looked back in those days. But mm -hmm. it was kind of neat just to be back on the field last night. And, and they have a really nice sign up for Dick Templin. And what a wonderful experience as a young 17, 18 year old uh, to be able to have the guidance of uh, both Dick Templin and, and uh, you know, Jim Hensley. It, it was truly two of the most enjoyable summers of my life playing baseball down there. And I was an average baseball player, but I had a lot of fun. And we got to travel the state of Indiana from Rensselaer to Seymour and every place. And, and we had a, a game on Tuesday night, Thursday night, a game on Friday, doubleheader on Saturday, doubleheader on Sunday, all summer long. And it, it was truly, plus I played on another travel baseball team and other things, but uh, I, I, I truly remember those days so fondly of pulling up and turning my radio on, listening to the Bee Gees and other 70s uh, people. But it, it was just fun to be there last night, to be a very small part of what the mayor has rec I recognized Dick for his, his hard work and dedication. I think Dick coached maybe 40, 45 years. And his wife was recognized too for her commitment to be on the second row of the bleachers for every game. But it, it was it was a lot of fun last night. And also add that our, our new softball diamond, we've put some finishing touches on it with a new warning track, new batting cage, and some other things. So uh, baseball, softball, and all the sports are in, in play, uh, going on right now. So I encourage you to be able to support our kids. And uh, it should be play Ron Colley tomorrow night, the varsity at Ron Colley and the JV here in our field. So. Uh, well, how appropriate that you were listening to the Bee Gees and now you work for Bee Gees. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes, that's correct. Yeah. But I, I appreciate, uh, I just appreciate everything and, and what uh, our mayor has done to, to just to spruce up the city in a lot of different ways, uh, I think has been really neat. And I know there's a lot of headaches going on with the road project downtown, but when that is done, it's going to really make a difference for Beach Grove. I know it's, it's going to be done in October, but. Uh, Get out and visit your park. There's been a lot of improvements down at Sarah Bolton Park and a lot more to come. Get out and really enjoy the great uh, community activities. So. Motion to adjourn. Second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Meeting adjourned.